Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today I wanna to talk about why Brood is really popping off and seemingly is gonna be one of the most picked heroes of TI, or at least one of the most cheesy heroes of TI, right? We're not really seeing a lot of Huskar. Tinker is here and there, but not too popular, but we've seen EG picking uh, Brood now and Entity picking a lot of Brood. And I'm pretty sure there's other teams doing it too. I can't specifically remember, but either way, let's break down why Brood is so broken. And also, honestly, this hero is really, really good especially if you know what to do and what build to go. And then on top of that, I'll explain to you how you can play it in pubs as well. So a bit of a guide, a bit of an explanation on why it's so popular, and let's get into it. And quickly, I wanted to briefly let you guys know that the Game Leap website is currently 50% off if you use the code POG50 at checkout. I'm telling you this because number one, I think it's a good deal. And number two, I'm making a lot of top tier content over there, live game analysis, replay analysis. I'm gonna be uploading some coaching sessions eventually very, very soon. So I have a lot of things that I think you guys should go check out. So if you're interested in more content like you get here on YouTube and stuff that's really gonna help you get to the next level, I'd appreciate it if you could use the code POG50 and get your 50% off, sign up to the website and I'll see you there. Well, the first thing we have to cover is changes. In 7.32, webs got changed like crazy. The bonus base movement speed was actually nerfed. However, the minimum movement speed you could get from webs used to be zero. So if you would get gone on as brood and people did damage to you, you would get slower and slower. However, now the minimum amount of bonus movement speed you can get is 24%, which is still extremely high. That was a major, major buff to brood. On top of that, your turn rate is way better in webs. One of the biggest changes as well in 7.32C is that the hero gained two HP regen from webs, two. It just flat two more HP regen. This hero gets five HP regen. Keep in mind, Ring of Health, for some perspective, is 6.5. Ring of Health is 6.5. Brood's second ability also gives Brood lifesteal. So basically, this hero, even against, he's against a Morphling Undying, a theoretically very difficult lane, and it's not easy for Brood. Brood is actually, it's still, even though it has a ton of regen, it's pretty weak, it has mediocre base stats. Like, its base stats are okay, but it doesn't have the best of armor. Webs aren't necessarily a trading ability. So all in all, you have to play passive, and that's exactly what Nightfall is going to do. The main thing I'll be showing you is that he's going to actually be playing the tree line over and over and over again. Like anytime he's looking for denies or CS, he's often going to play this right side tree line. As you'll see here, he's going to shift over, play this and avoid Gardic's damage, uh, at least temporarily, and the Morphling's damage. And it's really cool because by going for these denies, you can see he specifically goes for all the denies. He's actually going to make the wave push into him. Because once again, Brood is really, really bad at level one. Like, you're just not a good hero. And so you want to do everything to get the lane to push into you. One of the best ways to do that is by denying like he did, and of course pulling creep aggro. And that's the main two things he's doing in this lane as he pulls aggro again here. So at level two, now you have essentially infinite health as he's gonna sort of man up on Gardic here. Now, unfortunately, this is undying, so it doesn't look insane, but you can see Nightfall's trading here is ridiculously good. Right, his ability to just play in and out and kind of kite out the enemy's positioning is incredible. So he kind of baits in the Undying here. Undying gets a really nice two-man decay, but he sees that Undying steps up a little bit too far into the wave. On top of that, Lumiere is going to be distracted by this uh, this melee creep, and so he's not actually looking to trade with the Brood, and look at that. I mean, it's just insane, right? He has five wand charges built up, 7.4 regen. Like, this hero is, even though he got kind of double counterpicked, like I'd say both of these heroes kind of lane, at least early on, not all together, but early on, lane well into Brood. Uh, we're talking about Undying here, and yet he is 9 CS. He's obviously losing the lane. You're not supposed to win these early levels, but he's pretty chilling as, once again, another Q is going to come out, and that's going to allow him to, once again, poke out the Undying. And he's actually out-sustaining and Undying, which is something to behold. Now, some of the best laners with Brood are Skywrath Mage, uh, Dark Willow's pretty good, Shaman's good. Shaman's really nice and so is Skywrath because they're very good at trading at level one and they help protect the Brood, right? They can trade really, really well with the five and they can enable Brood to get some space because you'll see now that he has 25 CS and oh, that was so close. Now that he has 25 CS, two points in webs, a wand, Right? He is going to have no sustain problems and he can be kind of left alone. This even enables a hero like Skywrath or Shaman to roam to the mid lane, which is something both of those heroes like doing. Right, It's quite good for uh, these heroes. So essentially you want a ranged hero that can dominate the lane more often than not, and then they can leave the lane and do their thing. From there, the item you're going to buy is Mana Boots. So 
Honestly, I could see some builds that don't revolve around rushing mana boots because you don't instantly need the mana. Of course, you want to use Silk and Bola like crazy. If you don't know what this ability does, it slows the enemy for six seconds by 25%, does 100 damage, and then every single thing that uh, clicks what is affected by Silk and Bola does a bonus uh, six damage, which is particularly important when you have a gajillion spiderlings, right? That's the idea. On top of that, it gives the enemy missed chance. It does a million different things, but basically it slows them down and makes them vulnerable to spiders. That's the big thing. So from there, the ax ends up rotating into his lane. There's obviously a lot of heroes that threaten the spiders, such as, you know, Sven or ax or Kunkka or Mars. You know, all of these heroes, you just really need to be very careful around them. And when these heroes shift into your lane, you should do exactly what Nightfall does here, which is cut the wave, right? Make sure that if the enemy wants to farm, they have to do, you know, a really weird farming rotation, right? This axe, if he wants to contest the brood, will have to miss creeps under tower. So instead, the axe just isn't going to contest them, at least not right away. Uh, and Nightfall is going to be able to farm up the jungle. Now, unfortunately, the enemy is going to invade but the main idea on Brood is if they send a hero to your lane that you can't contest, just farm this camp, this camp, this camp, and the creep waves when they push him. If you do that over and over again, you will win the farming battle against even counters, which is why EG is literally first phasing this hero. I'm not kidding. They, they first phased it this game. It could have been countered by like anything, right? And yet he's super chilling. So we'll see him cut the wave, dragging it away from the ax, just kind of forcing him to chase him around. But the ax has to go back and get the creep wave he once again cannot chase him, and so Nightfall is free to do whatever he wants. And he's very survivable. He buys raindrops, has a buckler, 20 wand, right? Void Spirit will not be able to solo kill him, not at all, right? And so he can go deep into the jungle. Even here, funny enough, after he's built up a massive army of Spiderlings, he sees a major fight happening mid, and because EG's winning the game, he's gonna take the mid tower. On top of that, Axe has been top for a while now, He's not going to try to take top tower, so instead he can cut the wave and then, you know, subsequently shift the pressure away once again from the axe. So he's done an incredible job. And that's why this hero, like, if you want to pick it in pubs, you can kind of pick it whenever it seems. Because it just doesn't, like, it can play around its matchups really, really well, uh, even with items, which we'll get into in a bit. Upcoming here, we're going to see the brood buff come into play. So, like... In the past, if this hero got gone on here, it would die because it would lose all of its movement speed, right? The bonus movement speed. Now, even when he gets gone on, you'll see his movement speed drops. That's Scatter Blast, so ignore that. But typically, you would lose all of your movement speed. But he's still getting a significant portion of that bonus movement speed, even though he got gone on there. Even though he took damage, right? Even here with the Astral Step, he's 340. That's not that big of a slow, right? He's still running at a, as if he's not slowed, right? This is like pretty decent movement speed. And that's the power of the web now. He can still go through the trees even after taking damage. And on top of that, uh, the bonus movement speed makes you very, very hard to kill. So this hero has been buffed over. <laughs> it's actually got so many buffs. It's crazy how many buffs this hero got. On top of that, one thing he does really well is actually spread the spiders out to avoid ganks. You'll see, honestly, I'm not going to go into how to do this. I'm not even 100% sure, to be honest. Uh, I know it has something to do with tabbing through your control, but I'm not going to get into that right now. The big thing is he actually uses the spiders to scout ganks as well. Another reason why this hero is kind of OP. It's one of the best vision heroes in all of Dota. If you're afraid of getting ganked by a Kunkka and losing your spiderlings, you can scout it out. I don't know what he... Oh, wow, Axe got so unlucky on spins there. But if you're afraid of getting ganked, you can just scout it out, right? Every, th every potential threat can be answered by good positioning and, and spiderling scouting. And then from there, just farm up the jungle camps, be greedy, 96 CS in minute 13. It's insane uh, what this hero can do. And on top of that, you buy aura items. I kind of see this hero as actually the better Visage now. Um, sure, it's not as much late game damage as Visage. Visage probably scales a bit better, I would say. But Brood in the early to mid game and as a laner is way better than Massage in my opinion. And from my experience, from what I've been watching, that's super the case. And it's way better at taking towers. I mean, look at this tower here. With the massive group of Spiderlings, he kills it in three hits from that range. And a big thing to keep in mind is you don't need to overreact. If your team is fighting, just don't worry too much about it. Hit your timings. Like, this hero farms so fast that it's really not worth showing up to too many fights because... If you show up to a fight, you're giving up the capability to just wipe through the jungle, right? He even does walk mid here because he has a Wraith Pact and his team is diving the tier two mid. So 
He situationally makes the uh, the call to rotate over. EG is completely stomping at this point of the game, so it's like a reasonable play for him to you know go take a mid tier two so he can take the top outpost. But once again, over and over again, you're going to be farming, 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 popping his mana boots off cooldown. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a neutral item. Um, generally, you would want a mana neutral item. Uh, that would be best case scenario. And your hero is one of the best rochers in the game, right? You're extremely good at roaching, especially when you're on Radiant, right? When you're on Radiant, if you can take this tower, control the dire camps, you also thread and roche on extremely hard, right? Extremely hard because you can pop roche Lincolns with spawn spiderlings, make roche have a mischance and make the spiders do bonus damage to roche. And you have Vlaz, right? Wraith Pact. So if the enemy fights, you have the best early game item in the game, arguably, in Wraith Pact. And then on top of that, you have Life Steal so your team can stay high HP as they take down the Roshan. So just such a high utility hero. Really, really nice stuff. Back from there, even after they get the Aegis, look how he's going to play. He's going to cut the top side, go back, farm it up, right? Make sure he can hit his timing. He's going to go towards that pipe. And here's the big thing on this hero. At level 15, you have a Spiderlings health talent. This makes the Spiderlings way stronger way tankier they become way way tankier because this includes the small spiderlings and then when you have wraith pact you're of course making them even tankier when the aura is going and then the next item he's going to buy is pipe and all of a sudden these spiderlings that would just get shredded in certain counter matchups especially to magic damage like void spirit can actually live certain burst combos it's nuts and they can siege and we'll see that come into play later as he solo takes a rax with just Spiderlings. And that's why this hero is such a menace as a solo hero, look at this. Sends them out, no way he's gonna get ganked, right? No way they'll be able to sneak up on him. He's buying a pipe second item and yet he's gonna do some of the highest damage in this game. And if the enemy doesn't respond, he can take the tower. This hero does literally everything. It's also a solo kill machine against certain carry heroes. Um, for instance, like Wraith King and Sven, if they don't have their BKBs, just get annihilated. Uh, by Spiderlings because of the 55% mischance from Silk and Bola. Another nice thing about Brood is how it counters Glyph. A big issue in pushing in Dota, uh, as Dota stands right now, is that Glyph is just so rough, but the Spiderlings tank it extremely well, as unfortunately they get killed off here. And this can be one of the downsides of the Brood, right? If your Spiderlings do get killed off and you're not careful, the fight can get a little bit weird. Of course, the main goal in team fights is to basically throw out these Silk and Bolas on the right clicker or someone who you're sending Spiderlings on because if you Silk and Bola them, the Spiderlings do way more damage. But after the fight ends, he's going to stay top and you never really want to rotate out. You never want to TP mid or TP bottom. It's just a horrible idea. Just never, ever do it. Even if you feel like maybe you should, just don't. Take my word on it. Just look at his timings, right? Look at his net worth. He's funny enough, his team is just owning so hard that he's not even top net worth but he is so high up and he had to lean against them dying, right? <laughs> he has a greedy Exhort Invoker and SF, and yet he's still top three net worth, right? Which is pretty ridiculous. And here we see the Spiderlings go to work. He didn't even pipe them here, which I was a little bit surprised. I thought maybe he would, just to guarantee that they couldn't get bursted by Void Spirit, but the enemy doesn't react and they just lose their tier three. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, they just lose it. And he puts it now on the range racks and they get the Serpent Word Spiderlings combo. And now he pipes him up, right? So the Scatter Blast or the eventual waveform doesn't kill the Spiderlings. None of them died there, right? <laughs> and they take down the racks. Like, look at them go to work. This combo's crazy as they have to auto attack every individual Spiderling this game uh, to kill them off as they take a Rax with absolutely no committal. And that is the power of the piped spiders because they all get the pipe. It's really funny. They all get the pipe aura. So <laughs> they get a, what is it, 400 magic block? 400 magic block and 15% magic resist, right? Bonus or just flat. So it's like, they just don't die to, to most nukes. You have to right click them in a lot of scenarios. In terms of neutral item, you generally want something like Pupil's Gift. This is best case scenario. Other stat items like Aquila are pretty good too, as they give you a bit of attack speed for your insatiable hunger, some mana pool, some armor for the spiderlings. Vambrace is good too. Just become tanky, right? The main goal of Brood with this build is to be sort of a frontliner and a nuisance, right? You're the aura buyer who's gonna bully everyone. Well, he actually didn't take Spiderling's help. He took Spinweb Recharge time. That's pretty crazy. Interesting, okay. So he actually went for not what I would have expected. I don't know if this is like a snowballing thing or not. I'm not, I'm actually not sure. What do you guys think? Why did he not take Spiderling's help? It seems like a very good talent. I've been told that it's a very powerful talent and 
I've seen it be a very powerful talent, but he opts for the spin web. Either way, as the fight breaks out, disengages a bit, finds the Morphling on the side. This is just great awareness from EG saying that they can take down the Morphling. And now with Insatiable Hunger, he's stupid tanky because he's 80% lifesteal on his autos and 55 bonus damage. So he doesn't tickle, right? His autos, they kind of chunk, right? I mean, they don't do, you know, you're no SF, but he's kind of poking away. And look at this here, right? With the Silicon Bullet coming out, this is when your Spiderlings go to work because they do the bonus damage, right? Every single time they hit, they do bonus damage. So eventually it comes out onto the Void Spirit. He gets absolutely shredded. Gardic on his Undying goes down as well as he chases on to, <laughs> to the Snapfire and it's an ultra kill for Nightfall's Brood. So yeah, I, I don't know. This is a hero I'm going to be spamming on pubs, 100%. I want to try it out. I think it's honestly insane. You can win games alone. Like you can win games by split pushing with this build. The thing is, of course, when you have your auras, honestly, two things. When you have your auras, you want to show up to team fights. And honestly, aura builds tend to win pubs because most players don't have auras and they overextend. So if you can save your teammates by piping them and then punish poor itemization, like lack of BKB, lack of awareness to kill the Wraith Pact, all of these things. If you can punish this by buying Wraith Pact, your hero's win rate is just going to be better in solo queue. Like Visage for the longest time, part of the reason he was so broken is because Wraith Pact is just such a fantastic item. And having these aura items in pubs uh, where people kind of just group up and fight 24-7, having sustain and having items that enable early game fights like Wraith Pact Pipe is going to win you games because of how pubs play out. I see you might be like, oh, I can't solo carry with this build. Like, that's not the point of solo queue. You still have four other teammates. It's still really good to enable them with a Wraith Pack pipe. They're not going to do nothing. That's just delusional if you think that. Trust me, they'll have impact, you know, especially if you give them a Wraith Pack and, and a pipe. From there, he bought a Hex, which I was surprised. A couple items that you can buy. I personally think drums are pretty good. They buff up the attack speed of the Spiderlings very significantly. So I'm personally a big fan of the drums. Uh, I think the other item you could go is AC for similar reasons. It's also pretty nice as your hero's armor is kind of crap. At 14 armor, it's pretty underwhelming. It's not a great game for him to buy an AC. They don't really need the armor necessarily, at least not right now. The Morphling isn't particularly farm. So he goes for the Hex. I think it's mainly because he just feels like he can solo kill anyone, right? If, as, except for the Axe, he can kill them off as they're gonna look to go high ground here. And yeah, this is about where the game is gonna end. Look at these Spiderlings, right? This is insane. They give so much vision. I mean, they, this Spiderling gives vision to here. It's actually nuts how much vision they give. Scouting out the tree line, no way Axe can flank, no way Void Spear can flank, complete vision very easy it's kind of like having just infinite plague wars as every single time he makes new spiderlings it's five and then every single time he's killing something just for a bit of information on brood if your spiderlings hit a creep and then that creep dies you get plus one spiderling so they kind of like infest the creep or whatever right and so th that's an option but as the fight breaks out he's just going to kind of play the back line drop the wraith pack drop the pipe save his sf sf has ages but it's just not even close right and this is the thing when your team gets ahead in snowballs it's a great way to make sure you can close out these high ground attempts that your team is going to force. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your team is gonna overforce high ground, let's be real. And so make sure when they do overforce high ground that you're piping and raid packing them. Because yeah, as we see here, raid pack comes out, Morphling goes in, he dies. SF's full HP, partially due to the lifesteal of the Wraith Pact, right? The Vlads. And yeah, it's an easy fight. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you're inspired to play Brood. I'm definitely gonna be picking Brood quite a lot in my pubs. Do keep in mind, obviously you need a little bit of micro skills. It's not that hard. You might be like, oh, I can't do the vision thing. I shouldn't play brood. You're fine. Y you should play brood even if you can't do the vision thing. Learn to win the lane. Use insatiable hunger to heal up to full. You're going to have max HP basically 24 seven because you have five HP regen from webs at level one. Your level two ability also heals you. It also gives you 35 damage at level one, making you a trading menace. And then on top of that, with Silk and Bullet at level three, you can even chase people down. Brood in favorable lanes wins the lane, right? He kind of won the lane this game and he was against Morphling Undying. That is not some easy, easy lane, right? It's not. I mean, you might be like, oh, they can't kill spiders. It's the laning stage, right? You're not, you're not even playing around spiders. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one and I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.